Welcome to a tale that blurs the lines and colors outside the boxes. Today's story is more than just an adventure, it's an exploration into the hearts and souls of two remarkable people on a transformative journey. Are you ready to dive into the worlds of cross-dressing, gender swap, and the gender blender of life? Then buckle up, and let's set sail on this ocean of self-discovery. Before we do, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any of our future journeys. And after the story, be sure to pour your thoughts into the comments section. Your story is a part of ours, and we can't wait to hear it. Now, let the tale unfold. Ah, uh, gather round my digital fireside, dear viewers of the YouTube realm. Today I weave for you an engaging tale, a cross-dressing story from down under, that shall unfold before your eyes like a vibrant tapestry of life's complex threads. Our protagonist, a person of Australian lineage, goes by the name of Lachlan. Ah, spring in Australia, a time when the blossoms dare to defy the gravity that bound them as buds, much like how Lachlan defies societal norms. Feeling the early morning sun kiss his cheeks, Lachlan donned his favorite pair of yoga pants and set forth on a jog through the local park. A delicate sense of freedom filled him, an inspoken blend of gender swap and gender blender ideologies. As he ran, his eyes caught the playful dance of dogs chasing balls thrown by their owners. Ah, the simple joys of life, he mused. Once back home, Lachlan was quick to step into the shower, where the warm water droplets felt like liquid sunshine on his skin. The scent of lemon soap lingered as he stepped out, making him feel as fresh as a grove of lemon trees next to a soap factory. Feeling invigorated, Lachlan settled into his kitchen, opening up his computer with great expectations. The universe did not disappoint. Firstly, an email notification popped up. It was from Kay Lee, a friend and fellow crossdresser who'd sent a lovely picture of herself. Lachlan couldn't help but smile. She looked absolutely delightful. However, the second thing that caught his eye was less delightful a water droplet beside his return key. Upon inspection, it appeared the ceiling had an indiscreet stain. The domestic dilemma prompted a call to Sylvester, the neighborhood handyman renowned for fixing problems of all sorts. Parking in Lachlan's vacant wife's slot, she was in Patagonia this week, living her own adventurous life, Sylvester bustled in. After a few audible grunts and a thorough examination, Sylvester declared, Mate, I reckon we're going to have to squirt some mastic in that crack of yours. Mastic, Lachlan's eyebrows quivered at the term. He felt a frisson of anxiety but then thought, if it helps so be it. Now if you'll excuse me, Sylvester said, you might want to change. This could get a bit messy. Change? The word echoed in Lachlan's mind. Wasn't that what he had always been advocating for? A change in perceptions, a change in how society viewed people like him. Yes, it was time for a change, not just in ceilings or attire, but in life itself. Lachlan headed to his room and pulled open the wardrobe. There it was, his array of exquisite feminine clothes that he wore so proudly for his YouTube channel. He knew what he had to do. It was time for a new episode, one that would discuss the very essence of change, both the literal and metaphorical kinds. And so, Lachlan sat before his camera, dressed in a chic ensemble that echoed the colors of spring outside. As he hit record, he knew this episode would be special, an intertwining of his cross-dressing story and the broader narrative of life's unexpected twists. Good day, my fabulous viewers, Lachlan began. Today, let's talk about change and how sometimes the cracks in our lives need a bit of mastic, both literally and figuratively. Lachlan had just hit the record button, and with a sense of anticipation swirling around him like a spring breeze, he dove into the story of his day, subtly linking it to the theme of change, both in attire and attitude. Just as he was about to share a particularly poignant reflection on the nature of identity, he heard a loud crash from upstairs. The room shook, and a few decorative knickknacks tumbled off his shelves. The ceiling, it seemed, had given way under Sylvester's vigorous attempts at repair. Excuse me for a moment, lovely viewers, Lachlan said, pausing the recording and rushing upstairs. As he entered the bathroom, he found Sylvester waist-deep in debris and drywall, looking utterly bewildered. Blimey mate, I didn't see that coming, Sylvester exclaimed. Seems like there's a bigger issue than just a leaky ceiling. Heart pounding, Lachlan pondered whether this incident was a mere domestic hiccup or a sign of something more profound. He looked at the gaping hole in the ceiling, and then back at Sylvester. The handyman's eyes met his and seemed to say, this is a mystery you'll need to unravel. Gathering himself, 
Lachlan returned to his recording setup. My dear viewers, he resumed, the suspense palpable in his tone, you won't believe what just transpired. It seems life has thrown another curveball, a mystery that requires immediate attention. This episode has just turned into a suspenseful gender blender saga where anything can happen. Just then, his phone buzzed with a message. It was from his wife, Sarah, who was globetrotting in Patagonia. The text read, just found something extraordinary that you won't believe. It's a game changer for us. Now what could that mean? Lachlan felt like he was in a whirlwind of enigmas, each holding a key to an unknown lock. The ceiling, the message from Sarah, and even the theme of his video, everything seemed to be interconnected in a tapestry of unfolding events. My friends, as we embark on the journey to solve these mysteries, remember that sometimes the cracks and gaps in our lives serve as entry points for something truly extraordinary," Lachlan said, a wistful smile on his lips. He paused the recording once more and looked at the screen. It was time to call Sarah and perhaps Sylvester again, but not before changing into something more suitable for an unforeseen adventure. It was almost as if destiny was calling him to embrace change in all its forms, to swap not just genders in attire, but perhaps roles in the grand theater of life. Ah, indeed, the tale is too tantalizing to leave unfinished. So let us recommence the unfolding drama. With a sense of urgency, Lachlan changed into an ensemble that was both practical and stylish, a navy blue jumpsuit and ankle boots. The transformation was not just sartorial, but symbolic. He was preparing for whatever revelations were about to unfurl. After quickly setting up his phone, he hit the record button and dialed Sarah's number. The phone rang once, twice, thrice, and just when Lachlan thought it would go to voicemail, a breathless Sarah picked up. Lachlan, love, you won't believe what I've stumbled upon. The story that followed was beyond the ordinary. Sarah explained that she had discovered a remote community in Patagonia that held a unique celebration called the Festival of Fluid Identities. It was a place where traditional lines of gender were blurred, and the community celebrated each person for who they were, encouraging cross-dressing and even a kind of communal gender swap. Lachlan listened, fascinated. Was it coincidence that this discovery came at a time of upheaval in their home? Or was it fate nudging them toward a life less ordinary? Sarah, he said, his voice tinged with awe, I think it's time for you to come home. And when you do, I have a fascinating tale of my own to share. One filled with collapsed ceilings, strange messages, and the mysteries of identity. Sarah agreed. She would cut her trip short and return the next day. After hanging up, Lachlan looked into the camera. Ah, dear viewers, just when you think your path is set, destiny throws a wrench, or in my case, a collapsed ceiling and a game-changing revelation into the mix. Stay tuned as we navigate this curious gender blender of a tale. Lachlan then paused the recording and let out a sigh, equal parts relief and anticipation. He thought about how much he'd learned and how much more there was to discover. He imagined himself and Sarah at the Festival of Fluid Identities, swapping roles and garments as easily as they had once swapped vows. A knock on the door interrupted his musings. It was Sylvester, his hands covered in dust, but holding a peculiar object he'd found amid the ceiling debris. Thought you'd want to see this, mate, Sylvester said, handing over an old photograph. It showed a group of people at what looked like an early 20th century masquerade ball, men and women swapping clothes and roles in a setting that seemed as liberating as it was archaic. Stunned, Lachlan thanked Sylvester. As the handyman left to continue repairs, Lachlan sat down and pondered the strange events of the day. It was as if the universe had conspired to set him on a new path, one that invited him to question, explore, and celebrate the fluidity of life's ever-changing tapestry. Ah, but let us not hasten to conclusions, dear viewers and readers, for the tale remains incomplete and its ending not yet written. Will the Festival of Fluid Identities be the next chapter in Lachlan and Sarah's life? What secrets still lie hidden within the walls and ceilings of their home? Only time will tell. Oh dear friends, hold fast to your seats, for the tale takes another winding turn. The next day, Sarah returned, her eyes alight with the spark of untold adventures. As she stepped into the house, Lachlan could see that something had shifted within her. She was not quite the woman who had left weeks ago. She was, in a word, transformed. Eager to share their respective revelations, Lachlan and Sarah settled into the living room. With the camera set up to capture their conversation, they took turns unfolding their stories like intricate origami. Sarah listened and rapped, as Lachlan recounted his own tale of odd occurrences, from the mysterious drip in the ceiling to the clandestine photograph. 
When he got to the part about the Festival of Fluid Identities, her eyes widened. That's incredible, Lachlan, she gasped. Do you realize what this means? It's like destiny is knocking on our door. Or rather, it was Sylvester, back to give an update on the repair progress. But this time, he had a stranger accompanying him, a woman with an old-world charm and an uncanny resemblance to one of the faces in the photograph. Meet Alara, Sylvester introduced. She's a historian and was quite intrigued when I mentioned the photograph. Thought she might have some answers for you. Alara took the old picture from Lachlan's hand and peered at it closely. This isn't just any masquerade ball. This was taken at the original Festival of Fluid Identities, held right here in Australia over a century ago. You're sitting on a treasure trove of history, my friends. A collective gasp filled the room. The camera was still rolling, and for a moment, they all forgot it was there. So engrossed were they in the unraveling tale. You mean to say, Sarah broke the silence, that we've been living atop a historical site that correlates to the festival I just discovered? Alara nodded. It seems like it. And it appears that destiny, or perhaps just a very odd set of coincidences, has brought all these elements together. The room vibrated with an electric charge, as if the air itself had thickened with possibility. For Lachlan and Sarah, the notion of destiny suddenly didn't seem so abstract. Alara continued, I think you have a unique opportunity to revive this festival and combine it with the one you've discovered in Patagonia. Imagine a cross-continental celebration of identity, expression, and transformation. And you, you can be the pioneers. Ah, the plot thickens. Our protagonists, grappling with the mysteries of their own lives, find themselves in the position to champion a cause much grander than themselves. And so the preparations began, fueled by a newfound sense of purpose and excitement. Lachlan and Sarah, alongside Alara and Sylvester, started to sketch out what this modern-day festival of fluid identities could look like. They poured over old documents, reached out to global communities, and even started practicing their own takes on cross-dressing and gender blending. And all the while, their YouTube channel flourished, their audience captivated by this real-life saga that dared to blur the lines between fate and coincidence, tradition and innovation, male and female. But ah, before we race to what comes next, I pause to ask, shall we turn the page to another chapter, or take a moment to relish where our story has led us so far? Ah yes indeed, we shall peel back the layers and delve into the intimate folds of our protagonists' lives, drawing our viewers even closer to the hearth of this grand tale. Sarah, now revealed as an advocate for gender equality since her early years in the quaint city of Adelaide, had been nursing a secret. She had always felt a profound connection with her great-grandmother, Amelia. Amelia had been a suffragette, advocating for women's rights in a time when it was considered an audacious act. Little did Sarah know that Amelia had also attended the original Festival of Fluid Identities in the early 1900s. A hidden chapter in the family history, you see. Meanwhile, Lachlan found himself confronting memories of his youth, his days spent at an all-boys school in Melbourne where he felt out of place. His interest in theater, especially roles that challenged traditional masculinity, was the source of both his passion and his teenage angst. His struggles with self-expression were now finding a unique outlet. The Festival of Fluid Identities was not just an event for him. It was a mirror reflecting his inner complexities. Ah, a twist. Sarah discovered Amelia's long-lost diaries stashed in the attic one fateful evening. As she read the yellowing pages by candlelight, her eyes widened with each word. Emilia had written about the festival, describing it as a place where souls unfurl their wings, unrestricted by the bindings of society's narrow view. Sarah was stunned. Was her recent voyage a matter of fate? She felt a mysterious connection to Amelia, almost like she was guided by her spirit. In parallel, Lachlan received a call from an old drama teacher, Mr. Thompson. Miraculously, Mr. Thompson had stumbled upon an unpublished play written by an anonymous Australian playwright, featuring characters that pushed the boundaries of gender norms. He felt Lachlan would do justice to these roles and recommended he incorporate it into the festival. So you see, dear friends, the lines between past and present, man and woman, destiny and choice, started to blur in the most fascinating way. With the festival of fluid identities approaching, Lachlan and Sarah felt both the weight of history 
and the pull of a future full of promise. And they documented it all, each personal revelation, each planning hurdle, each moment of magic and doubt, on their ever-growing YouTube channel. The comments and likes exploded. Viewers were enthralled, not just by the festival plans, but also by the authentic personal struggles that both Sarah and Lachlan shared. Messages of support poured in from all corners of the world, from people who found their own stories reflected in this extraordinary tale. But even as the festival drew near, a pressing question hovered in the air, one that could shake the very foundation of their endeavor. Would society accept or shun this revival of forgotten traditions? The tale weaves on, and so we must ask, are you ready for the chapter that follows? The suspense thickens like a well-crafted stew, and you, dear viewers, are in for a feast of a lifetime. As Sarah and Lachlan readied themselves for the festival of fluid identities, an unforeseen obstacle materialized before them. An anonymous email arrived, questioning the very ethics of their festival and hinting at efforts to shut it down. The sender was elusive, a riddle wrapped in a cloak of pixels, and this ominous message made its way into Lachlan's inbox. The festival had started to gain a considerable amount of attention, both praise and scrutiny. Sarah and Lachlan took to their YouTube channel, discussing the complexities of organizing a gender blender event, and opened the floor to public opinion. The engagement was overwhelming. Debates sparked like fireworks in the night sky, each comment representing a unique hue in the spectrum of human thought. Lachlan found himself recalling the words of his father, a stern man who had often said, The world is black and white, son. You should know where you stand. His father had passed away a few years ago after a battle with Alzheimer's, a disease that gradually erased the sternness and revealed a vulnerable man struggling to remember the boundaries he had once enforced. This thought added a layer of emotional depth to Lachlan's commitment to the festival, igniting his desire to create a world far more colorful than the one his father had known. Sarah, inspired by Amelia's diaries, took it upon herself to discover more about her great-grandmother. With each turn of the archival page, a new secret unveiled. Amelia had been friends with an Aborigine woman named Malara, who believed that the fluidity of gender was tied to the spiritual essence of the land. The partnership between Amelia and Malara was decades ahead of its time, a testament to unity and diversity. Sarah felt their legacy fueling her every step, her soul uplifted as if buoyed by ancestral wings. As the final preparations for the Festival of Fluid Identities came to a head, the question of the anonymous email sender was still unanswered. Was it an individual or an organization? Was it someone from their past or a stranger governed by an alien ideology? Sarah and Lachlan couldn't be sure, but they chose not to bow to the shroud of fear. With the YouTube community rallying behind them and history beckoning them forward, they were more determined than ever. With a countdown video uploaded and the festival just days away, the anticipation was palpable. Sarah even conducted an Amelia Hour on their YouTube channel, dressing up as her great-grandmother and narrating diary entries, while Lachlan hosted a virtual gender blender party complete with costume tips and makeup tutorials. The Festival of Fluid Identities was now more than an event. It had become a movement, a turning tide in the quest for gender equality and self-expression. And yet the mysterious email loomed over them like a dark cloud, leaving the question hanging, what will happen when the day of the festival arrives? So the tale continues. A tapestry of questions and secrets hung in the air as the dawn of the Festival of Fluid Identities broke over the horizon. The suspense was as thick as a woolen blanket on a winter's night, and you could cut the anticipation with a knife. As Sarah put on her makeup, mirroring the colorful personality of Amelia, she felt a shiver crawl up her spine. It was as if her great-grandmother was whispering in her ear, comforting yet urging her to brace for what lay ahead. Lachlan, on the other hand, suited up in a mesmerizing blend of masculine and feminine attire, a tribute to the fluidity he so passionately endorsed. Sarah decided to wear a special locket that Amelia had once worn, an heirloom she found nestled in a dusty drawer and Lachlan wore a ceremonial bracelet made of Dreamtime stones that he had received during his travels in the outback. Personal and ancestral narratives were weaving into their present lives, as if fate was leading them on a delicate dance. They arrived at the venue, 
hearts pounding with both excitement and trepidation. An ocean of faces awaited them, curious, jubilant, contemplative, forming a kaleidoscope of human expression. There was a unity in their diversity, an unspeakable bond that made the air crackle with electricity. The festival was in full swing, workshops on gender swap, panels on cross-dressing history, and performances that blended the lines between masculinity and femininity. Everything went smoothly until a mysterious figure caught Sarah's eye, a person obscured by the soft shadow of a wide-brimmed hat. They seemed to be scrutinizing the event, taking notes, and generally exuding an air of incongruity that didn't sit well with her. Was this the sender of the anonymous email? Her heart sank for a moment. As she moved closer to confront the stranger, her locket brushed against her skin, almost as if cautioning her. And then, the most unexpected thing happened. The mysterious person looked up, and their eyes met. For a moment, time stood still. Sarah gasped. The person under the hat was none other than her own cousin, Emily. What are you doing here? Sarah questioned, a mix of relief and confusion washing over her. Emily removed her hat and sighed. I sent the email. I didn't understand all this, and I thought I could stop it before it got out of hand. Lachlan joined them, overhearing the last part. Emily looked into the faces of both Sarah and Lachlan and said, But seeing all this, feeling the warmth and acceptance, I realize how wrong I was. I'm sorry. The three of them stood there, a tableau of changing perceptions and crumbling prejudices. Sarah opened her locket and showed Emily the tiny inscription inside, words from Amelia, change begins within. The festival of fluid identities reached its zenith with a powerful speech by Sarah and Lachlan, which they streamed live on their YouTube channel. They talked about the journey, their ancestors, the courage it takes to be oneself, and the necessity for spaces that celebrate all shades of human expression. The applause was thunderous, the impact everlasting. As for Emily, she began her journey of understanding and acceptance, fueled by a newfound respect for diversity. She even promised to attend the next festival, not as an onlooker but as a participant. So, there it is. The winding path has led us to a pause, but not an end, for stories like these are never truly over, are they? And so we find ourselves at the cusp of this wondrous journey, my dear viewers, at that delicate point where an ending waxes poetic to lay the groundwork for new beginnings. After the revelry had died down and the festival grounds began to clear, Sarah and Lachlan stood arm in arm, overlooking the setting sun that painted the sky in hues of gold and crimson. The world, it seemed, was applauding them in its own way, validating their essence and illuminating their path forward. Today was a milestone, wasn't it? Sarah mused, gripping her locket as if channeling Amelia's spirit for a brief moment. I, but just one of many to come, Lachlan agreed, touching his Dreamtime bracelet as if reminding himself of the strength of generations that came before him. It was then that Sarah took out her smartphone and positioned it for a selfie with Lachlan and the sun dipping below the horizon in the background. She leaned in and whispered, let's give our viewers something to remember, shall we? Both their faces broke into heartfelt smiles. Sarah clicked the photo and immediately posted it on their YouTube channel with the caption, as the sun sets on today's festival, remember that every end is a new beginning. We are all stories still being written. What's your story? Share with us in the comments. As the video went live, they could almost feel a surge of love and warmth radiate from their global community. They knew that the comments section would soon be filled with inspirational stories, words of encouragement, and tales of life-altering journeys. It would become a safe space for anyone exploring the realms of cross-dressing, gender swap, or experiencing the gender blender of existence. Before signing off, Sarah and Lachlan gave a knowing look to each other, as if a secret pact had been sealed. Thank you, everyone, Sarah said into the camera, for allowing us to be a part of your lives. We love you all. Always be you. And now, we turn the page for the next chapter. Until next time. The sun had completely set, but for Sarah and Lachlan, it seemed like it had just risen. Their eyes sparkled, mirroring the first stars that appeared in the sky, as they prepared to leave the grounds, their hearts full. So there it is, dear viewers, a story that began as a mere whisper and ended in a chorus of many voices. But remember, the comments section is where the magic continues. Your stories, your truths, and your voices will add to this unfolding narrative. Go ahead, let your words flow, for every comment is a story and every story is a light in the dark. And so, until we meet again on these digital pages, may your lives be as vibrant as a Sydney sunset, as transformative as a butterfly, and as fluid as the love that knows no bounds. Ah. 
but what is an end but a pause before a new beginning? So go ahead, let the comments be your new beginning. What story will you tell?